Good afternoon and welcome to the UCEA Executive Committee interview webinar. This is Alonzo Gilzine, graduate research assistant and doctoral student at UCEA headquarters at Michigan State University. I'm here today to interview Dr. Sarah Wolfman as a part of her, her candidacy for the Executive Committee. Today's listeners will be hearing from Dr. Wolfman, Associate Professor of Educational Leadership at the University of Connecticut. Her research interests include urban districts and schools, education policy, and organizational theory. Welcome, Dr. Wolfman. Thank you so much. Thanks for chatting with me today. All right, so let's begin with the first question. Please tell us about your background and your scholarship as it relates to leadership preparation and practice. Sure, and um, so I'm currently um, a faculty member in the Department of Educational Leadership at the University of Connecticut. Um, and before that, I was a um, graduate student at UC Berkeley. And before that, um, to sort of begin my education um, path and roots, I was a kindergarten and second grade teacher um, in an elementary school in the San Francisco Bay Area. And I was also a reading first reading coach. Um, and while I was teaching and while I was coaching, I had a lot of questions um, about policies and systems um, and the ways in which some of the things that we were doing within my school were quite different than in other districts and in other school contexts. And as I began sort of understanding and realizing that this was really linked to issues of leadership and of issues of policy, um, that's what drove me to um, work towards my PhD in educational policy um, with a focus on organizational theory and um, with my dissertation looking at the role of um, instructional coaches in curricular reform. Um, and after that, I um, uh, became an assistant professor and then an associate professor at the University of Connecticut. Um, and during that time, um, much of my work has looked at, um, again, sort of how are leaders and teachers at different levels of the education system, how are they um, making sense of policy? How are they interpreting policy? How are they responding to different policies? Um, and when I look at this, I'm really um, asking and attempting to figure out um, how can we improve the infrastructure? How can we improve the leadership um, so that policies are implemented more equitably and so that uh, a variety of students um, receive learning opportunities um, uh, to improve long-term outcomes? Thank you very much for that answer. Uh, so for our next question, you served for several years as a plenary session representative. Tell us about your engagement in UCEA's governance. So um, as a plenum representative, um, it's been really um, useful and um, an honor to sort of um, to do the back and forth between UConn and UCA as a whole. Um, and I really see this plenum um, as a place where it's a two-way street between um, gathering information on what's working and what are needs sort of within the UConn context and bringing it back to sort of UCA as a whole. Um, and then also kind of from the plenum experience sort of gaining a, a larger sense of the larger vision and mission of UCA and helping to translate and bring some of that back to UConn to shape um, some of our daily work um, across faculty. Um, within plenum two, um, I've attempted to raise um, issues and questions of equity, particularly around um, how we um, support and uh, attend to, um, to women faculty um, and thinking through sort of who's, who's seated at the table and, and who receives what sorts of opportunities. Um, I have also been involved in supporting graduate students um, at, uh, at UCA, both sort of formally and informally. Um, some of my formal work has included being a Jackson Scholar mentor um, and taking that seriously um, is a way to really advance UCA's um, mission and pillar to um, support um, impactful research. And I think that by um, supporting graduate students, that's one of the number one ways that we can support um, research long-term and improvements in research um, long-term for the field of educational leadership and policy. Okay, thank you so much. What are some of the other ways, and you and you sort of, I'm sorry mentioning this, but what are some of the mm -hmm. other ways that you've been engaged in UCEA? 
So a, a couple other ways. Um, one, which feels like um, uh, has been really an important strand of my work has been being involved in the Wallace uh, University Principal Preparation Program Initiative, um, which UCA has also been a partner with. Um, and so in my work with UConn's involvement with the Wallace Principal Preparation Program redesign effort, there have been um, kind of side-by-side -side and partnering efforts with um, UCA leadership and with UCA to again kind of scale up and learn from, you know, UConn has learned certain things as a result of redesigning our principal, principal preparation program um, and trying to sort of scale that up and feed that into UCA as a whole and share that out with um, other UCA and member institutions. So that's been one sort of form of engagement. Um, another form of engagement, uh, which perhaps is very uh, 2020 or something, is uh, being actively involved on Twitter. Um, mm -hmm. And so um, being, uh, helping to amplify and elevate um, and contribute to the discourse that UCA is sort of initiating and or sometimes I notice other discourse or um, important threads on Twitter that I make sure to include UCA in. Um, so again, kind of like broadcasting and amplifying important ideas um, related to education policy and politics and um, current leadership challenges, uh, you know, at the national and international levels. And again, kind of doing that back and forth with both with, uh, you know, UCA accounts and um, UCA GSC um, Twitter accounts as well as, um, uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for the next question, I would like you to discuss with us your scholarship, research projects, teaching and or service that can inform the work of UCEA, particularly the work of the executive committee. Great question. Great question. I think I've hinted at a few of these things already, um, but I will start with um, my scholarship and, and my research. Um, so most of my research um, broadly it uses organizational theory and qualitative methods. Um, to understand um, how people in districts and schools implement a variety of reforms. Um, and so one major strand of my research um, has, looked at, uh, has looked at coaching is one improvement lever. And so for over 10 years and across different states and districts, um, I've had the opportunity to study different forms of coaching and to study the structures and activities of coaching. And in that, I've learned a lot about um, the nature and the power and the potential of both formal and informal leadership in districts and schools. Um, and I believe that many of the insights that I have from um, how and why you know, coaching can work and how and why coaches can serve as both these formal as well as informal leaders in a variety of spaces within districts and schools um, can be really useful. Um, for UCA and for the work of the executive committee. Um, I also think that by looking at coaches and coaching, I have um, a pretty expansive and inclusive um, definition and stance towards leadership. So a leader mm -hmm. is not just the person who has the formal title, the leader, I'm much more interested in who's doing the leading. Um, and by looking at what coaches are doing when they're leading, I think that I've learned a lot about what kind of ground level leadership really looks like um, versus mm -hmm. just having a formal title, if that makes sense. Um, the second branch of my research um, and a more recent branch of my research is looking at um, the implementation of inclusion reform and specifically how district and school leaders are creating supportive conditions so that special education teachers can do their best work um, to help promote um, equitable opportunities for students with disabilities. Um, and I think in that work, again, I've been able to sort of surface some sort of some new and different ways that um, leaders can make schools more inclusive. Um, and again, I'm trying to make very sort of concrete, like what are the concrete steps so that schools can be more inclusive and so that schools can be more supportive of um, special education teachers who have higher attrition rates and things like that. Um, and I'm also really interested in bringing that to UCA to again sort of um, continue to expand how we think about um, 
research on kind of special education as one sort of branch of um, equity oriented research, um, as well as to think through um, how do we promote um, positive policies that are linked to special education, which again are, are deeply tied to issues of um, social justice and civil rights as well. Mm -hmm. uh, and then in terms of my teaching, um, everybody hinted a little bit at this, but um, I have had opportunities to teach um, in our in UConn's principal preparation program, EDD uh, program, and PhD programs. Um, and across those kind of programs, um, my teaching really embeds um, theory, it embeds different approaches to using qualitative methods to answer um, relevant questions. Um, and it also pays attention to policy and, and really sort of tries to surface this idea that um, district and school leaders, as well as um, doctoral students, um, really benefit from having a deeper understanding of the policy system, sort of understanding the, the rules of the game or the, um, the nature of the field. Um, so that they can then be creative and innovative and um, do the work that they really want to do sort of within that. Um, so I think that's an important um, angle of my teaching. Uh, mm -hmm. another, another piece within my teaching um, is that I was involved in the principal preparation program redesign effort, um, which was really striving to make our, um, our principals ready to be school leaders, day one ready um, to be leading a school. And, and to do that, we wanted our, um, our course, coursework to really focus on core standards um, and for the coursework and their internship experiences to be really based in current problems of practice and issues that mattered you know, for us and within the Connecticut context. Um, and so I did a lot of work kind of in partnership with um, with district and school, current district and school leaders to actually figure out what kind of ground up, what do we really need principals to know and be able to do? And, and I think that there's a big opportunity to help sort of, again, sort of bring that and scale that more broadly across UCA so that other programs, um, not that they're necessarily copying the courses or the standards that we're even covering, but it's more to sort of take on that sort of strategy to sort of refine and, um, improve their own programs um, to make sure that, again, that leaders are really, the leader, leaders who graduate are really ready to um, lead schools, particularly in these very challenging times. Um, and then thirdly, I wanted to share a few aspects of my service um, that I think um, would bring assets to UCA. Um, the first is that since uh, summer of 2019, I've been a co-editor of Educational Researcher, um, and within that role, um, I've had the opportunity to help um, work with associate, associate editors and um, work to recruit um, uh, scholars to submit manuscripts and work to shepherd manuscripts um, that are relevant and that are cross-cutting and that tie to some really important um, questions and issues in the field of education policy and educational leadership, as well as other issues, obviously. Um, but I think in this, it's given me some insights as to um, A, sort of current policies that, that people are doing uh, quality research on, um, as well as given some insights about um, how we can sort of bolster um, researchers to write um, kind of quality and persuasive and compelling uh, manuscripts for journals like Educational Researcher. And so that's something that I would want to bring again to UCA is I think as we think about building capacity and um, preparing grad students and early career scholars to contribute to the field, um, I think that there are ways to think through how do we sort of coach and support them to submit to, um, to, to a variety of journals, um, not just ER, but many other journals. Um, so that's something that's been um, in my mind and links from my service to UCA. Um, and then lastly, in terms of my service, um, and this links back to my scholarship, most of my research um, is done using a partnership approach. And so my research involves um, active contextualized outreach to districts and schools. 
um, and to the State Department of Education. And so um, I'm very interested in sort of bringing some of my ideas and strategies related to partnership research to UCA and really thinking about how we kind of bridge and meld some of our service work with our research um, and how we translate some of our research to make sure that it's used in practice and um, actually makes an impact on the ground. Thank you very much for that. So, and your last answer really got into some of this as well, mm -hmm. but um, for our final question, we wanna ask, can you share the reasons why you've chosen to run for the executive committee and your vision for the future of UCEA? Awesome questions. I have I have a few ideas. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, to start, I really want to 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 couch this in that um, to say that I, I'm running as a way to support UCA within an extremely uncharted period. Um, it, it feels that as we're in the COVID era, um, leaders and district and school leaders, as well as teachers, um, are facing um, new sets of needs. They are facing um, challenges that they have never encountered before. Um, and as a result, um, researchers and instructors um, need to step it up quite simply mm -hmm. and need to not only step it up, but also perhaps step out of their own comfort zones and ways of doing things. Um, because many of the things that we used to do and used to study are now quite different. Um, and so um, I am willing and excited to support UCA during this window of time and to really think about how do we, how does UCA as an organization think about supporting and enabling um, the educators and leaders on the ground that are facing very new things. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I also think that as much as it's about supporting the educators on the ground, I think some of those parallels and some of that newness also um, relates to our own work as faculty members and as we engage with graduate students. So part of my um, my vision and stance would be to really think through how does UCA create um, a really responsive um, and collaborative um, and supportive um, environment and use sort of supportive strategies to benefit um, grad students, faculty members, and of course, um, practitioners um, on the ground. Um, and, and I feel that my um, my knowledge and skills and research on coaching can be really applicable towards that, um, because I would argue that almost as an organization, there could be benefits to almost shifting towards a coaching approach and really thinking through and and asking people in different positions, you know, what do you need right now? What would be most helpful at this moment? Um, what can we do incrementally that can make next week or next month slightly better, um, considering the number of challenges and the number of um, dilemmas that we're facing. Um, I'm also running to, um, and I hinted this multiple times, to sort of to scale up ideas and strategies for um, preparing principals and district leaders. And again, really thinking through what not that we want there to be one cookie cutter way of preparing principals or district leaders, but how together can we work a bit smarter um, to help prepare um, different leaders, again, for many challenges in the field and to make the school um, much more equitable places. Um, I'm also running uh, to find ways and to continue to work towards amplifying issues of equity and inclusion. Um, and to think through who's who's seated at the table and whose voices are we hearing and whose voices are we not hearing and what does that mean about the way we need to do our work and who else we need to invite to the table and who else we need to um, ensure that we're listening to. Um, because if not, we're going to end up reproducing um, oppressive systems and um, not necessarily uh, meeting our mission. Um, uh, so I guess finally, in terms of vision and, and ideas for future directions of UCA, I think that I, um, I did mention sort of this idea of UCA being um, a supportive organization um, to promote learning and change and improvement. 
Um, I also um, would be eager to sort of to help um, enable UCA to move towards um, supporting relevant research that is um, that really includes practitioners and that um, and that really answers questions that are that are central and that are really central to practitioners' uh, problems and, and daily realities. Um, and so I think finding ways that UCA helps support researchers to really do that re relevant research feels really important and feels like a really exciting opportunity at this moment. Um, I think lastly, in terms of UC a vision for UCA, I really see UCA as a place that, um, that crosses many boundaries, that um, it, is, it is one home for scholars and graduate students, scholars at different stages, so that includes graduate students, um, as well as practitioners. Um, but it crosses boundaries between policy and leadership. It crosses boundaries between research and practice. Um, it's asking many people to collaborate together and to learn together. Um, and, and so I think my final sort of vision or push for UCA would be this idea of really building um, building it as a home and building it as a home that includes many different um, constituents um, who bring different strengths and who may have different purposes or goals. Um, but really thinking about how together we are developing leaders and supporting high quality research and making a difference so that um, policies can make a difference um, for kids and for schools and for society, hopefully. Okay, well, thank you for your time and very thoughtful responses, Dr. Wolfen. Um, this interview is going to be made available for UCEA institutions and the plenum representatives prior to UCEA's annual convention. And I just want to thank you very much again for taking the time for this interview. Thank you so much. Thank you for, for asking these questions and for taking the time today.